What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a leak down test on the Yamaha YZ250F to make sure we got a healthy engine. So an engine is basically an air pump. It needs to have good compression to work properly. If you have a leak in the system, it's going to run poorly. So we all know about the compression test, which is a dynamic test where you crank your engine and you read the pressure in your cylinder. If you have multiple cylinders in your engine, you can read the different pressures, compare them and see if one cylinder has a problem. In my case, I have one cylinder, so I could read the pressure, see if I'm in spec or if I have low compression. But if you read a low compression, you don't know exactly where in the engine the problem is. If you want to know more and pinpoint exactly where the issue is, you want to run a leak down test, which is a static test. You don't move the engine during that test. You want to have your piston in top dead center. You apply air pressure from the spark plug hole and you measure the pressure of the air coming in and the air coming out. For that, you want to use a leak down tester, which has two gauges. It looks like that. And let me show you exactly what it consists of. Okay, so here is the leak down tester. It's got two gauges. This one will be connected to the air compressor through that port right here. This is a regulator, so you can turn it to adjust your PSI. I highly recommend you go to 100 PSI for two reasons. The first one, it's enough to hear any hissing and to detect where the problem is on your engine. And the second one for the calculation, if you have 100 here and you have 95 here, you know you have 5% leakage. It's extremely simple. So you understand that you need to have an air compressor that goes at least to 100 PSI, but that should really not be a problem because I have a very, very small air compressor and it goes over 100 PSI. So we'll do that. We're going to connect right here and this here is going to be connected to the engine. We're going to simulate that right now just for me to show you exactly what it looks like. So this here is connected to my air compressor. I'm going to go right there and I am roughly around 52 PSI. You can see that. I have the exact same reading between here and here, right there. Why? Because there is absolutely no leak. This is closed, it's not connected, and it's really airtight right now. But an engine is never going to be 100% airtight the way it is right now. There will always be some kind of leakage. A healthy engine needs a little bit, and a bad engine has a lot. All right, so this here is going to be connected to the engine. That is a very simple line. This one will be connected right here. And then this one here will be on the spark plug hole. This is without an adapter. It's an M14, which will fit into many, many engines that have spark plugs that have that diameter right here. The spark plug I have on my engine is an M10. See that right here? Almost 10 millimeters. This is an M10. And this is no problem because I have a bunch of adapters and I have an M10 right here. I highly recommend you grease or you oil. It doesn't really matter. You can put some engine oil on here. I'm just very particular. So I like to put my white lithium grease on this just so it's wet, it's lubricated and it's not rubbing and damaging my O-ring as I tighten it. I just do it finger tight to have the O-ring sit properly. You don't need to go too far. It just needs to uh, fit pretty snug like that. And this will be the O-ring that will be sitting on the spark plug, around the spark plug in the head of the engine. So that line right here, this is the way it's going to be in the engine. And now we're just going to assume that this right now is connected to the engine. And I'm going to plug this one onto that port right here. And we're going to see exactly what's going to happen. We're going to open the system. So right now it's closed because nothing is plugged. So there is 0% leak. And now I'm going to connect it. All right. And you can, you can hear the hissing, right? So that simulates a big, big leak. You see the difference right now? Okay. So again, this here is zero person leak. We have the exact same measurement between the two gauges. And now I'm going to simulate a little bit of a leak, a leak and you're going to hear that noise, the hissing noise. All right, and now I'm going to simulate a big leak. All right, and that's the difference you have between those two readings will give you the percentage of leak you have in your engine and will tell you, is it okay or is it not okay? All right, so now I'm going to take it off and we will get ready to put that on the engine. 
All right, so quick note here, if you're doing that procedure, I'm assuming you know how to remove a bunch of things on your engine because I removed my spark plug, my cam cover, my carburetor right here because I wanna be able to hear if something is coming from the intake valves. I left my manifold, the exhaust manifold right here because it's still possible to really hear with this one. But now let's plug the tester on the engine. All right, so let's put the line into the spark plug hole and I'm gonna tighten everything by hand. I'm not using any tools. You seeing I'm using my left hand right now, very delicately, I'm trying to line up the line with the head because I don't wanna cross thread my head. That would be a very expensive mistake. And right now, we're trying to do things right. So it's just gonna be hand tight, not using any tools. I'm not over tightening anything. I don't wanna damage the O-ring, just wanna seal it. I'm gonna plug my tester onto the air compressor and then I'm gonna turn my regulator to have an input pressure of 100 psi just like we talked about before and before i plug the line that's connected to the engine onto that tester i'm going to make sure that currently i am at the top dead center so that line on the rotor is aligned with the notch on the cover so we're good we know that we are the top dead center and now we're making sure it's the top dead center after the compression stroke because the lobes are pointing out and the valves are all closed so we're good to go we can plug it look at the camshafts right now Pay attention to the cams right now. Boom, did you see it? It spun, and that's because there is pressure in the cylinder right now, and it turned the crankshaft, which turned the camshaft, and now the valve, the exhaust valves are open. That's why you have the hissing. I have a breaker bar connected to the crankshaft. I'm pulling it. It's pretty hard. I have to fight the pressure. But now I'm back onto the top dead center, and I can read 100 PSI in, 96 PSI out, 4% leak. Excellent. So we have about 6% leak in the engine, which is really good, but we're gonna try to see exactly where the leak that we have is located. The regular option is to use a mechanic stethoscope. I don't own one. What I do though, is that I use breather hoses that are usually used for my carburetors. I have one here that's pretty long. It's the most standard breather hose and it's the perfect diameter to go in my ear. I'm gonna use my best ear. We all have a best ear. We can be young, we can be old, we all have one. And I'm gonna plug that one side in my ear and the other one I'm gonna go around the engine. Be very careful when you do that. If you have a big, big leak and there is really air flowing there, you don't wanna damage your ear. But because I have a very small leak, I'll be able to go around and pinpoint exactly where it's coming from and I'm gonna let you hear it. So let's Let's start by removing the cap onto the radiator and see if we have bubbles in the coolant. Because if we have bubbles, it means air is coming in and there is a leak. There is no bubbles, that's great news, no problem here. So now I'm gonna use my hose and I'm gonna start by putting it into the exhaust to see if there is any leak coming from the exhaust valves. I don't hear anything, so the exhaust seems good. Now I'm gonna go into the crankcase and I can hear something. Yeah. Okay, now I'm gonna go into the intake and we have three valves, so I'm gonna test them independently. I can definitely hear something, but I wanna know which one it is. And I oh, feel oh. like I found which one it is, yeah. so I'm gonna have you listen to it. I'm gonna put the hose onto the mic so you can really listen what's going on. The left valve, the right valve, there is nothing, but here on the middle valve, we can definitely hear that hissing noise. So I'm very happy we can actually pick it up on the mic. And now I'm gonna try in the crankcase, and I have the hose on the mic. So that tells us where are the weak links in the engine. And for the crankcase, we know it's the air coming through the rings, even though everything's new, and I do the ring gaps, there is of course some air coming through the rings. That's the reason why we hear that hissing noise. And here you have it. Now you know how to do a leak down test on an engine. So let's just recap what happened. We put the cylinder in top dead center on the compression stroke to make sure all the valves are closed and the engine is sealed. Then we put the tester onto the head and we apply 100 PSI onto it. That's gonna be easier for us to hear any hissing and it's gonna be easier for us to determine the percentage of leakage we have in it. If we have more than 15%, then there is four parts of the engine you wanna check. The intake valves, the exhaust valves, the crankcases, and the coolant. 
If you have an air-cooled engine, which is something I'm gonna do very soon on the channel, but don't tell anyone, then you have one less thing to do, only the intake, the exhaust, and the crankcases. I really hope this video is helpful to you guys. If you like the video, well, like the video. It really helps me. If you wanna see the entire rebuild of that bike, and I'm pretty confident the engine is gonna run now, then you should definitely consider subscribing to the channel, activate your post notification, this way you know when I post the next video. I see you in the next one. And meantime, keep building. So let's put the carburetor back on the head, the spark plug, the coil, plug it, put some gas in the carburetor, and then let's kick. <laughs>